You know what fucking hurts? When you look around and realize people you thought were your friends aren't your fucking friends. So let me tell you about my moment. So I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. Last four months, I've been horribly fucking depressed. Like the most depressed I've been in years. Um, I didn't leave the house. Um, I packed on a shitload of weight. I moved about 15 minutes outside of like the heart of Denver. And um, I didn't realize like just that little 15 minute drive would isolate me so fucking much. Like I, I just, it is what it is, you know? Well, um, I reach out to my friend group and, you know, I see on their Instagram all the time, like they're doing things without me. I'm never getting invited. And in my head, I'm like, fuck me. Like 15 minutes isn't that far. Like maybe they just like, don't like me anymore. And so I like asked them, I was like, Hey, like I'm really not doing okay. Can you guys like bring me in more? Like I don't live that far. Like I can catch an Uber, like please. And then I'm sitting there in my head, like, why am I begging people to hang out with me? Like, Morgan, what the fuck? But, like, I was in such a bad spot that it was just, like, it was better than being alone. So then they're like, yeah, girly girl, no problem, girly pop, let me girl. Well, um, I invite, I had to initiate. I invited one of my, like, girlfriends in that group to, like, meet me out for drinks. And it was, like, the first time I had been out and seen people in, like, a month and a half. And so I'm talking to her and I was like, hey, listen, like, I'm like, really not doing okay. Here's what's going on. And like, I just needed to talk. And she's like, mm, mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, so if you guys could like bring me in more, like I'd really like that. Like you guys are my friends. She's like, yeah, no problem. And then like right after she says that, she starts telling me about how they all booked a trip together. And she's telling me about like the intricacies of this trip and all these things they're gonna do as I'm actively not invited. And I'm just sitting there like clenching my drink like, This is so fucking hard to hear right now. Don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. Like, I've asked you guys numerous times, like, bring me in more. And you're sitting here after I just poured my heart out to you. And you're telling me about a trip you guys are all going on. And how, like, oh my god, it's gonna be so much fun. And so I just was like, I close out. I go home. Sob the entire way home. I'm so fucking sad. And so then I reach out to her. And I was like, hey, I'm gonna be so honest with you. Like, that really hurt my feelings. Like, I actually told you, like, how alone I feel. And how I, like, I would pray you guys would, like, bring me in and... You just sat there and, like, just talked about how I'm actually not invited to another thing. She's like, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to make you feel like that. Well, fast forward six weeks. I get a text from her. I haven't heard from anyone. Absolute fucking crickets. I get a text from her. She's like, sorry, I've just been struggling with, like, seasonal depression. And I just need to, like, I had to focus on myself. And, like, talking to you gave me a lot of anxiety. But if you want to meet up and chat, we can do that now. And I'm like, you didn't give a fuck about my depression, how bad I was doing. You let me go six weeks without hearing from you. And now you just want to pop back up. You're not my friends. I've been seeing a post on Twitter and it said, when did you realize that your supposed friend hated you? Ooh, I'll go first, baby, because this is for me. So I was homeless at the time and I was living with my best friend and her family. So she had just got her own apartment. So I'm thinking like, yeah, like I'm in there. Like I don't got to worry about her mom talking shit to me no more because her mom literally used to talk shit to me every day. I used to go to work just to hand her mom my money. So I was broke. I didn't have nothing for myself. I was paying bills in a place where I slept on the floor. So all of that should have made sense, right? But I still loved my best friend. So once she got her own place, I'm thinking I can be over there instead of being at her mama house she started having me over there cool one day i came home from work when i tell you like i was starving because i didn't have no money i had to give her mom my last i didn't have no money because i had to use the money for the bus to get to work so i mean i didn't have nothing in my stomach i think i worked like a 10 hour shift that day i actually walked into her house and she was cooking her and her sister so i'm like oh cool because i'm starving like i can literally hear my stomach All of a sudden, they got done cooking, and they dished out two plates for themselves, and then the food was gone. But I'm staring at them like, so you didn't make anything for me? Like, like, this is my best friend. So I'm like, why do we have beef right now? I just got off of work. Nothing happened prior. Now, all of a sudden, you're treating me like I'm just not shit. She lived in a high rise. So they sat on the floor because she didn't have no furniture yet. She just moved in. So they sat on the floor. And I remember the meal that they had. They had steak bites and mashed potatoes. Because, baby, she could fuck up some steak bites and mashed potatoes. <laughs> so I remember that shit. Like, like I told you, my, I was hungry. So as they're eating their meal, I look in the door where you, because you could literally see yourself. And they're 
eating, laughing at me. They're literally sitting there taking a bite and... I never felt so stupid in my entire fucking life. I never felt so stupid. Like, just to know that your best friends would starve you when you didn't do a damn thing to them, that's when I realized some people just don't have your best interest. It doesn't matter if they're a friend, if they're a family member. Some people just don't have your best interest. And you have to realize that the minute they show you. Did you ever have a time where you realized a good friend wasn't actually your friend? I have a quick story. I, this is random. I was just thinking about this. I had this roommate, and I'm not going to say his name, but this guy, I loved this guy. I thought he was my best friend. I thought, you know, we'd be friends till we were old. We were both musicians, had the same sense of humor, loved the same movies, all that kind of stuff. So we were roommates, and we had another roommate too. So anyways, I realized this guy was probably had probably been plotting behind my back the entire time. I mean, this guy really took every opportunity he could to try to make me look stupid or embarrass me in front of his friends, usually women. He would mask very bitchy things he'd say as jokes. And then one day, he made some snide remark. I don't know what I was doing, something creative. Let's say I was going to make a painting or something. And he kind of like, as, like in a very dickish way, was just like, oh, well, you can't decide what you want to be anyway. Because I do a lot of things. What shitty energy, you know? How limiting. I'm the, I'm the kind of friend I want to see my friends be successful and happy. Full stop. Okay, so I originally filmed this video and I had to take it down because it got flagged because I said the B word. So I'm going to try to recount this because people keep asking me what happened to this story. So I'm going to tell y'all about the time I found out my best friend hated me. And before you ask, nope, it's a whole other person because I'm so great at picking friends, right? So this girl is somebody who I was friends with since elementary school and we were super close, like 20 plus years we were friends. And the friendship started because she used to get bullied a lot. I'm not sure what was going on at her house, but her hair was never done. Like she got made fun of for her clothes and I felt bad. So I kind of took her under my wing and I started trying to help her, you know, be cute. Like I would sneak clothes to school for her to change on the bus. I would steal my mama's brush and I would do her hair. I really was just trying to help her because she was getting bullied a lot. And that turned into a friendship, right? So we, as adults, we kind of went our separate ways, just naturally life took us in different directions. And then we reconnected, I think on social media because we were doing some type of event together. She reached out to me asking for business advice because I had so much success in my career and she was still trying to kind of get her brand off the ground. So she originally reached out to me for help, for advice. And then we went back into our same dynamic as friends. So fast forward her birthday, her birthday comes around and I asked like, you know, what are you doing for your birthday? And she's like, nothing. I'm depressed she's crying on this call and I'm like why are you depressed and she just goes into this thing about how she is not happy where she's at in her life and she just doesn't want to celebrate sometimes she doesn't even want to be here and so me being a friend I'm like okay let's fix that you know we're gonna celebrate you let's celebrate your birthday so I'm gonna plan something so mind you this is in a different state so I'm having to travel to all of this but we make plans to take her out me her and whatever other girl she wanted to invite we decide to go out so we're going bar hopping now since we're going bar hopping i'm like okay i'm gonna get us a nice hotel i get us a nice hotel a suite that's up the street from the bars so that we can have somewhere to go comfortably and safely after we've partied right i'm paying for all of this so i take her out we have a great time um we go out to eat we're drinking we're doing shots it's a whole thing we go back to the hotel now one of the things that was dragging the evening down was her toxic boyfriend he was calling and calling and calling and calling and bugging her and she's on her phone all night half the time she's um helping to plan the event because we have things going on with the event and then half the time she's apparently talking to her boyfriend so later on we get back to the hotel and the boyfriend comes calling again asking her what's she doing where's she going what's she doing where's she going and i here's where we left i accidentally said the wrong name now now, okay, before you judge me, the name I said was the name of the club promoter who we had been talking to that entire day. Now, again, we're planning an event. So I'm thinking this is the club promoter calling and I'm like, hey, is that so-and-so? Let me talk to him. I have something about the event I need to tell him. And apparently it was her boyfriend. Now that wouldn't have been a big deal if she wasn't sleeping with the club promoter. So apparently the boyfriend had been suspicious and when he heard that 
that name, he goes off. He is livid. He goes off on her, says he's going to kick her out. Like, he's just, he's being verbally abusive. It was really, really bad. So, she's like, I'm leaving. I got to go calm him down. And she's mad at me for saying the wrong name. And, like, she, you know, she's insulting me, going back and forth with me about saying the wrong name because I mixed her men up or whatever. And so, I'm like, okay, if you want to leave, you can leave. That's fine. But, I'm not going to give you your key. So at the beginning of the night, it's established. I'm babysitting. I have the keys, right? For one, I've seen you drink everything that wasn't nailed down. So you think that I am going to buy you all of these drinks and then give you your keys so you can get in your car? Absolutely not. So I say, I'm not going to give you your keys. Can't do that. Now, mind you, I'm practically sober. I may have had like a shot, a glass of wine, but I'm not drunk to the level of drunk that they are, right? I'm still a legal driving limit. I'm the reason we got home, right? So I tell her like, hey, I'm not going to give you your keys. Can't do that. We have all had something to drink. Can't do that. But what I will do is I will call you an Uber. So she, you know, of course, she's talking smack, going down to the Uber. Now, this is what did it for me. When we're going down to the Uber, she says, you ain't got to keep my keys. You ain't got to babysit me. I ain't going to crash my car. Everybody ain't your husband. Now, if you're new here, you might not know. But for those of you who know, my husband passed away and he passed away in a car accident. So when she said that, I was done. I was done. I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm not going to do this with you. I didn't even get irate. I'm just like, I'm done. Like if you would say something like that to me, no, absolutely not. I don't want to be your friend. I'm going to put you in this Uber. And then after that, do not contact me again. Now, when I say I'm not going to be her friend anymore, she goes off. She starts escalating like she's doing the most in the lobby of this nice hotel in front of all these people. She is going off. And the guy who works in the lobby gets in between us trying to break it up. She reaches around him and snatches my hair now mind you at the time i had these like 30 inch blonde locks that went like to the back of my knees my hair was really really long she sneaks me she reaches around the guy snatches my hair and i fall to the ground now also mind you i am in a 300 dollars cocktail dress and my nicest heel i did not come prepared for a hood fight okay but when i fall on the ground the guy's still trying to break it up and she's like getting around him screaming screaming at the top of her lungs clawing at my face she's trying to claw my face and she's screaming you not all that be you not all that you not better than me she just kept saying i'm all that and i'm not better than her and yeah so long story short the police end up getting called and she went to jail for it and i'm pretty sure she has to do like some type of aa meetings or something like that now but i said all of that to say that people will really be around you and they will hate you they will really hate you like what i take away from that whole scenario is you are clawing at my face you can hit me anywhere but you want to scratch up my face and you're screaming that i'm not better than you and i'm not all that this is not the first time you've thought that you have built that up for a very very long time and this incident it's not about your man it's not about the keys this is the you were looking for a reason to do that and say that to me. So again, I said all that to say, like, you just have to watch the company that you keep. And sometimes it is better to be by yourself. I see a lot of younger women, especially, and they're in these groups, they're going on trips, they're going out just to have somebody to split the bill with or just to have somebody around and you have to learn to be by yourself. It's better to just be by yourself than around people who give you those backhanded compliments Watch those people that feel like they need to take you down a peg. The ones that act funny around other people. It's not cute. It's not funny. And it can really be dangerous.